Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I pray everybody had a great Thanksgiving with their families and had a chance to rest. Amen. And to take some stress out of life. Amen. Amen. As everyone's making their way to their seats, why don't you take a moment and just shake somebody next to you's hand and tell them how good it is to see them. If you don't know them, introduce yourself. Amen. 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 Man, we do have a few guests in our house this morning, and I want to take the time to thank uh, Judy or Jim and Judy Brazo. Did I mispronounce that? We're so glad you're here. Thank you for being our guest today. And then Maureen Oliver. We're glad you're here, Maureen. Where are you? Back there. We're so glad to have you as well. Thank you for being our guest today. Amen. It's good to have guests in the house. Amen. And uh, feel free to worship with us. We're not as crazy as we look, we promise. Uh, no amens. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I do have a few prayer requests to bring before the church today. If you indulge me for just a minute, uh, we're still praying for God to move upon Keith Arnold. Amen. And Lisa Owens. Uh, my father-in-law, Dave Nicholson. Amen. Uh, his cancer is uh, pretty invasive. We're asking God to move in a situation there. Uh, Eddie and Carrie Kindig and their, their family, we're asking God to move upon them. Amen. Tom and Judy Roberts, asking God to move in that situation. Amen. Uh, Sister Waddle, uh, Gussie Waddle, which is Sister Sula's sister. Boy, that's a lot of sisters. Hallelujah. Sister Sula's sister. Amen. Wanda Wilkins, Jimmy Justice, also Steve Duff, asking God to continue to move on all these needs. And then also, amen, as the ministers would come, we're going to go open up these altar for an opportunity. If you are sick in your body to come down, let the ministers pray for you according to the Bible. Amen. That's not, we're not just making that up. That's the scripture says, let them call for the elders of the church and then, and let them anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Okay. And I also want to make out one more prayer request and that's for sister Marilyn right here. God is going to do some great things for her in the next few moments because she's got some tests coming up this week and we're playing God give us a clean bill of health in Jesus name amen amen anybody else that needs prayer please come we invite you to come and let us pray for you and anoint you with oil if the church would let's raise our hands and lift our hearts to God this morning Lord we love you and we thank you for your your uh, majesty God we thank you for your power we thank you for your anointing and for your glory, God, which we feel in this place. God, we thank you for the spirit of faith, which is here, God. We're asking you, Lord Jesus, elevate us today, God. Elevate these needs before you, God. We magnify you, God. God, we declare your name as holy and as true. We declare your word as truth and as faithful. God, there is no falsehood in it, God. You said we could declare healing, God. And you said by your stripes that every one of them would account for my healing, God. We're asking you, Lord Jesus, to allow the Spirit of God to fall here today in accordance with the word of God. Lord Jesus, touch every need, every heart, and every request. To every name we've lifted up before you in the family, God, that surrounds them. God, we're asking you, God, to allow your spirit to be poured out in a majesty way, God. God, move, Lord Jesus, in majesty. Move with glory and with power. Now let the Shekinah glory of God descend in this place today. Meet our needs where we are, God. We're asking you, Lord Jesus, God, with the faith, Lord Jesus, as just a mustard seed, God, that can split mountains, God, move in a powerful, mighty way. I mean, if you believe that God, God can move this morning, would you clap your hands and lift up a voice this morning? Lift up your voice with a shout of praise. Lift it up with a high shout. Oh, God, we exalt you today, God. We exalt you today, Lord Jesus. You are mighty and you are king. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, can we just tarry for a moment? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Have your way upon us today, Holy Ghost. Have your way upon us today, Holy Ghost. God, we need you, Lord Jesus. Stir our hearts, God, in thanksgiving. God, it is the season to be thankful. God, we have so many things to live before you, God. God, we're thankful. If you're thankful, would you praise unto up to the Lord? Would you send up praise for just a few minutes? Would you, amen, just take a few minutes in our schedule and, and let's just find something in our heart to be grateful for. Lord Jesus, we thank you, mighty God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. If you feel the Holy Ghost, high five your neighbors. Say, get with it. Amen. We're fixing to worship. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. If you can't, then worship with us anyway. Amen. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the Oh 
what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it
in your own words will you ask him to be in this place today not just words from a song but words from your heart God we want to dwell in your presence today God we want to be right in the middle of your presence today 
we invite you into this sanctuary this morning. God, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you're not here, it's not worth being here. Our, our talent isn't enough. God, our abilities isn't anything for anybody to see. But if you, God, will come in the middle of this room today, you can speak to hearts, God, and, and you can rebuke sickness today, God. You can move in this sanctuary. We invite you in this place. We just want to be in your presence today, Lord. We just want to feel your anointing in here today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we extol you. You are an awesome God. You are a great God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The King of glory. Come and feel this sanctuary. We just want to be near you today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just want to be with you. Just one more time. Sing, King of glory. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. Hallelujah. Nothing replaces being in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There's no place I would rather be this morning than in the presence of a holy God. I worship you today, Jesus. I give you praise, God, for who you are. I, I give you praise today, God, for what you've done in my life. You are an awesome God. You are a great God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the moving of your spirit. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I, I'm not against tradition. I'm not against things of that nature. But if that's all this church service was, we would be missing the mark. This isn't just tradition. We don't just come here at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings because that's just what we always do. Maybe that is why you came, but it shouldn't be. We come in here to encounter God in a corporate fashion. We can encounter him outside of this building. He's not relegated to this sanctuary, but there's something special about a corporate response of worship with like fellow believers of, of precious faith. God can move in and strengthen and encourage and lift up the brokenhearted and lift up those heads that are hung low. That's what God can do in the sanctuary when he begins to move. Thank you for your worship this morning. Thank you for your response. Hallelujah. He is so good to us. He is so good to us. Amen, amen. One more time, let's just put our hands together and worship. We love you, Lord. We exalt you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We lift you up in this place. Hallelujah. This is all about you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Thank you for your worship today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. I'll be looking at one verse there, verse 18. I do want to say again to echo the uh, Brother Justin earlier, thank you for all of our guests who are here. Thank you for being with us. Amen. One more time. Can we just give them a hand? We are honored that you would be here today, that you would take time to be with us. And we are thankful that, that you're worshiping with us. Lane and Lily are here. They're, they're not guests. They're just family. We're, this is home too for them. So we're excited for Lane and Lily. Thank you guys for being here today. We miss you both. Amen. I'm glad. To, I'm, I'm sure as much as we are happy to see you, mom and dad are even more so. So thanks for being in town. I'm sure they enjoyed that so much. Thank you also to Brother Folk. Thank you for teaching the Word this morning, doing such a great job. <clears throat> Amen. I'm thankful for our ministry team here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of Christ of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I'm going to speak today on a subject that may sound a little humorous at first, but I just want to share what's on my heart. 
don't neglect the Oreo pudding. Somebody say amen. Don't neglect the Oreo pudding. You may be seated this morning. I did also want to just interject quickly if I could. Uh, I want to thank all of those that have been helping and re remodel this bathroom back here. Brother Bill and Brother Nate have spent countless hours here. Amen. And because of that, Sister Vaughn and Tori and Hunter have made this their home for a few days too, and we're grateful for all of their hard work. Uh, Buddy Chandler, Brother Damian Pass helped out with the tear out. Uh, Angelo Fodiatis helped with painting, and then of course Sister Sula and all of her work. I want to thank her and all of them for that. We still have a few things that we're going to work on there in the foyer, so it's not totally out of the, the, the construction phase. So if you'll forgive us for a few things there for a few weeks, we're going to take care of some needs there. But thank you again for all those that are helping with that. Don't neglect the Oreo pudding. Hmm. Sometimes we have a tendency in our selves, in our flesh, to take things for granted. It's just our nature. We take things for granted. We, we get so used to some things that we don't even realize it. We, we don't acknowledge them anymore. We don't think about it anymore. We're just used to it. This is what we do. This is our life. This is just normal. We take it for granted. Some of you have been to our home. We have stairs in our house. Some of you have stairs too. It's not that special. But our stairs, what's special about our stairs is the person who constructed them put big pieces of bull nose trim on the front. So going up is not a problem, but going down, it, it, it removes the width of the, the, the depth of the step for you to step on. So we've had quite a few people fall on our stairs. So if you come, we'll have you sign a release. It's just right there at the door. Just Really, we, it's the first thing we tell people when they visit our house. Please be careful on the stairs because it's just inevitable somebody's falling down the stairs and most of the time it's pretty comical so we appreciate the the comedic relief until yesterday <laughs> I've been in my house for two plus years I've never fallen down my stairs until yesterday <laughs> I was you I knew I know how my stairs are constructed I know I've changed how I walk down the steps you can't walk down the steps like this you kind of have to walk like this like off to the side I've just perfected it like a you know clown shoes that's how you have to walk down the steps I've, I've known how to do it I, I've never fallen it's not that big a deal but yesterday I was in a hurry and I ran up to put something upstairs for my wife and as I turned around to come down I didn't take my time I took it for granted that I knew how to walk down my steps and I went all the way to the bottom of the steps, just not on my feet. <clears throat> so I paid the price for taking something for granted. In fact, today, I'm still paying the price for taking something for granted. I've got some bruises and bumps. and Though everybody did come running, I appreciate that you know, my mother-in-law was there, my wife was there, my kids came running. It was awesome that they came running, but they came running and laughing. That was the part that was hard <laughs> for me to really handle, like... I'm hurt here. There should be... I, the words were coming out. The correct words were like, are you okay? The, the language was correct, but the way they were delivered was in laughter. So, praying about that in my spirit still. <laughs> you take things for granted. I just wasn't thinking. I, I, I've been up and down those stairs countless times in the last two and a half years. Never had an issue, but I just took it for granted and ended up at the bottom of the steps. And uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, we just had a few days ago. How many enjoyed some kind of Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah, it's been awesome. I'm tired of turkey and ham. If you've got leftovers, I don't want them. I don't, I'm done with it. But on Thanksgiving Day, I, I, I ate my full. I, I, we had a ton of food, and I ate a bunch, of course, just out of obligation, and I just had to do it. So I did that. And then, of course, there's plenty of dessert, so I, I didn't want to be... I didn't want to be partial, so I tried to take a little bit of everything just to help others' feelings, and I thought that would be my part. So I did that, and, and I ate all that stuff to the point that I was extremely full. I didn't want anything else, and it's at that moment that I remembered that my wife had made Oreo pudding, and it was in the fridge out in the garage, and I was totally full. 
Like I, I could not eat it. If I, it the, Oreo pudding is one of my favorite desserts. If you've never had it, maybe you'll get the blessing of her making it for you sometime. Uh, if it makes it here, because normally it doesn't leave my house. It's just, we consume it very quickly. We love the Oreo pudding. But I couldn't, I, my thought process was, I, that's awesome, that's my favorite dessert, but I'll just get some later. I'm just so full, I can't deal with Oreo pudding right now. I decided I'd get it later, not mess with it. Normally that would have been the highlight of my, I would have probably ate that before dinner. If I'd have come home on a normal day and she had dinner ready and I, or was cooking it and she had Oreo pudding in the refrigerator, I probably would have started with the Oreo pudding. I love it. It's so good. But that day, I didn't. I said, I'm just going to wait. I neg- in my abundance, I neglected it. In my overindulgence, probably, really, and more likely, I neglected what I normally would have been so excited about. Because it dulled my senses. What I, what I had received already was so much that I, I didn't even want what I normally would have done anything for. It's easy in our flesh to be grateful when we're in desperate need. When we've got to have something, when we're desperate for something, when you haven't ate in four days, you're desperate for food. And when somebody were to give you something, it's easy to be grateful in desperation or in need. But uh, when you don't have anything but, when, but there's a difference Our flesh will fight gratefulness in abundance Our flesh will fight gratefulness It doesn't want to be grateful when there's an abundance Because you don't need it There's not that necessity in your life for it And so you're not as grateful in abundance normally As you would be in need I've come to remind some people today That we cannot forget what God has done for us in our lives we, we're at a point today, many of us are in, sp- in a spiritual way, we are in a position of abundance. We've got a lot of things that we've asked for. We've got needs that have been supplied. We've got prayers that have been answered. We've got promises that have been given. There is an abundance in our spirit. And many times, if we're not careful, our gratefulness will subside with the abundance that we receive. But that's not First Thessalonians. It said, in everything give thanks. Not just when you're in desperate need and you've got to just have a morsel of food to sustain you, but when you've gotten everything you've asked for and God has answered the prayer, we've still got to be just as grateful on that day as we were on the day we had nothing. Our flesh battles against gratefulness. The further you get removed from your blessing, the further you get down the road from your miracle, the easier it is to forget about it in your flesh. You forget about your desperation and and what God did for you in that moment. You forget about the mercy that was applied to your life. You just leave it alone. What you once were so excited about and and would be the first in line to receive and be thankful for, now just kind of, I'll take it or leave it. If I can get to it, I will. If I I have time later, I'll maybe reach for that. But I've come to challenge you in your spirit today. We've got to be careful that we don't forget what God has done for us. Matthew chapter 26 contains the story of Simon the leper. Jesus is at the home of Simon the leper. It's it's interesting that the Bible makes sure it denotes that this Simon is the leper. It's not just Simon, it's Simon the leper. What does that mean? That, That means that Simon, no doubt, was a leper that had been healed by Jesus. We know that he was not currently a leper because had he been a leper, they would not have been in his house. It was against the law. It was against Jewish custom to be around somebody that had leprosy. They were considered unclean. They had to be put uh, without the city or without the camp. They were not allowed to be in contact with other people. They were in COVID quarantine, so to speak. Too soon, okay. They were at Simon the leper's house. And I think it's interesting to note that they still considered him Simon the leper, even though he had leprosy no longer in his body. That's who he was. So I want you to understand the house that they were at. They were at Simon the leper's house. And had he been healed, like it appears to be, of leprosy, I'm sure he was eternally grateful for that healing. Because as a leper, you lost everything. 
You lost every, uh, everything you owned. You couldn't stay with your family. You couldn't stay with your belongings. You had to go and get away from everybody. In fact, so much, the Bible tells us that when you were, if you were walking down the road all by yourself and lonely and nobody's around and people started coming to you, you couldn't even let them approach you. You had to say, I'm unclean. You've got to get away. I've got leprosy. So that's who Simon was. Simon was that person. And Jesus healed him of leprosy. Okay, you got the picture. That's who Simon was. So now Jesus is at dinner at a party. Maybe it's the party for celebrating the fact that he no longer is sick. I don't know what it was, but we know that he was eating, Matthew 26, at Simon the leper's house with his disciples. Having a party at a leper's house. And the Bible says that a woman came in with an expensive perfume and she broke it and she began to anoint the feet of Jesus. But the response that was, was given was not one that you would expect at Simon the leper's house. Everybody was upset. They were not encouraging her. They were not saying, yeah, you've come to the right place uh, that Jesus can help you. No, no, they were, they were upset that she would enter into that home. And furthermore, they were upset that she would break this expensive perfume and put it on his
Hello, I'm Pastor Phil Chandler. Just wanted to take a moment to thank you for joining with us today in worship. We're so grateful that you took the time and we're honored that you joined us. If you heard anything today that you have any questions about or something touched your heart, we do encourage you to reach out to us. You can do that in a couple different ways. First, through our website at communitylifectr.com or via our social media pages of Facebook and Instagram at CLC of Warsaw. Again, thank you for joining with us, and we will be praying that God richly blesses you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.